The Saga of the Seaside Inn. Rendezvous in Costa del Sol. Does this actually get you new outfits? I'll have to try that. But not now. I want to explore. I'm ready. Ready to get back to exploring. My song! This is my song! with a horn? And a piano? It's not a horn, it's a clarinet. I can't even tell the difference. get a fight version of this too here a helicopter a pink helicopter I was gonna mention something about the helicopter in Costa del Sol but now I'm distracted by this amazing song we got the fish I just realized we're still in our outfits. This is pretty awesome. So how, I wonder how big this area is gonna be. All right, since we actually get to keep our outfits on, I'm gonna go change into cool outfits. I thought it was just for Costa del Sol, but apparently it's the entire area we get to explore in our outfits. That's freaking wild. Look at how big this area is! Holy moly. I will say, yeah, it took us a long time to get here, but now I'm even more excited to explore this area. Because it took us so long to get to the next big area. Well, while we're walking back, I just want to say thank you guys so much for being here. It's been an amazing day. It's been an amazing two weeks. And uh, hearing all your guys' reactions to everything and, and being able to talk everything through and all the support as well. Just appreciate it so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for experiencing the game with me. cannot thank you guys enough for everything. Whether or not you're watching the VOD or here live or, you know, you're way in the future because you're avoiding spoilers and you're watching this a year later. <laughs> Whatever it is, man, I, I truly, truly appreciate you being here with me. Yeah, we're going Chocobo shirt. You better believe we're going Chocobo shirt. And I'll just do the same ones. 
Actually, I kind of like the flower one. Should I do the flower one? Bikini team assemble- it, Dude, it, <laughs> it's ironically so funny that this was a meme like 10 years ago. Bikini DLC was a meme for us. Freaking 10 years ago, playing like New Threat. Now it's real. Who, who would have ever thought it would actually be real? Except it's not a DLC. <laughs> oh wait, I didn't do Barret. Actually, Barret's fine. Yuffie's fine too. Be good. Like, it's so funny to me. I don't even remember. I mean, it, it started because like, Square started putting... That was like back when everyone hated any form of DLC content. Um, so we always made the joke like Square's gonna do some bikini DLC for their newer games. I don't really remember where bikini DLC actually came from though. I think it was, oh, I think it was when, um, I think I was doing a PSN store rant and we found that Gal Gun game. I think that's where it started. The ac the actual meme started. PSN store rants, I missed those. What, you haven't been here in two days? <laughs> oh, what are we talking about the store on Wednesday, I think? Two whole days. Oh, four whole days. Oh, remember these guys from Remake? No holding back. Attack me! Or not. So do you guys think the game has gone too far past uh, fan service yet? No. I feel like... I feel like we're on the precipice of it. But I also feel like pretty much the rest of the game is going to be serious, with the exception of Gold Saucer. And even that, I think Gold Saucer is going to have serious moments, so... But I'm kind of thinking ahead. We had this... We had this giant... Three separate chapters of just, like, nothing but fan service and, like, two bosses. But... Looking forward, you know, I feel like the rest of the game is going to be pretty serious. I mean, yes, jokes here and there. It's always going to... They're always going to be cracking jokes and stuff, but, like, in terms of fan service... I feel like we get some in Gold Saucer, and then the rest of the game's gonna be pretty serious. And if you want your fun fan service goofiness, you can always go back to the other areas, you know, so... That was kind of cool. That cave was hard to see without the owl being there. So the owl actually kind of helped that time. I mean, like, in general, I'm usually pretty happy with fan service, and I don't think there can be too much fan service generally. But I guess the issue is that this is a remake of a very serious game. So that's where, like, the fan service can be too much. It would be like if... Resident Evil 4 Remake had, like, just an insane amount of goofy stuff put in it. It'd be like, you know, that's cool, but Resident Evil 4 is a pretty serious game, and you want the remake to also be pretty serious. You know? So, I feel like it's kind of the same for this, where, like, Final Fantasy 7 is, is a funny, goofy game with a lot of, like, comic relief in it, but it's put next to a bunch of very serious, very dire circumstances that which is what makes the comic relief work so well so like if it if it if it goes too far into comic relief 
and there's not enough seriousness that it doesn't feel genuine, you know. But like I said, I think the rest of the game is going to be pretty serious, so I'm not too worried about it. I was just curious what you guys thought. Though Costa del Sol is now a renowned beach resort, it was once home to a string of humble fishing villages. However, when relations between Shinra and the Republic of Junon began to deteriorate, Shinra annexed this portion of the coast. After the war, the company designated the area for redevelopment, transforming it into the must-visit location for avid sunseekers that it, that it is today. Costa del Sol offers vacation packages to suit any budget, allowing travelers from every corner of the globe to savor the idyllic beaches. Plans that include a trip to the Gold Saucer have proven particularly popular. Tifa looking lost. I think that the issue is that there's like a hundred times as much dialogue as an OG, so it's hard to strike the right balance. I think... I think the issue may be... Not, not really the issue, but the potential issue is that it's an open world game, which means there's a lot of side quests and the only real way to do side quests is to do, like, funny, goofy stuff. Because you don't want to do super serious stuff in the side quests. Because then people might miss out. Which isn't 100% true. But maybe that's just kind of what they thought. I mean, some of the side quests are, like, at least somewhat serious. But it's definitely not on the level of, like, Forbidden West, where... Every side quest feels like a monumental moment and, like, explains something about the world that you don't necessarily need to know to finish the game, but definitely, like, world builds a lot. This game doesn't really world build with the side quests, it just fan services for its side quests. Yes, I got it. But then, when you have a bunch of fan service in the main game, as well as fan service in the side quests, it begins to be a lot, I guess. But it sounded like, from what you guys were saying, like, you don't mind it. It didn't seem like any of you were really minding the amount of fan service. I think as long as it's serious when it needs to be, fan service away, I guess. Like I said, my only issue was that I think they could have held off Cosa del Sol a little bit. So that it was better balanced. But that's really my only complaint. I don't think there's too much. I also think that some of the goofiness was just weird, like the piano thing feeling really out of place. And you'd be randomly hitting on Cloud. Although, to be fair, that's not really out of place. She does hit on him in the original game, but not... Not unless you go on the date, really. Best do it right. While hiding in their shells, they're impervious to basic attacks, but hitting them with powerful offensive abilities will force them to come out. She whiffed. Cloud's gonna die a horrible death. I like how regular fire is still one shot and stuff. But it's probably just because that's kind of the gimmick with these guys. Some of my materia, and I need to try Yuffie. So let's get rid of Tifa. See, Mav. Oh boy, there she is. 
Oh, she has two weapons already. So she does have the elemental ninjutsu. Launch an attack even while immobilized or reeling from damage. She comes with an old beast bracelet too. She also comes with steel and HP up in assess. But what does Yuffie look like as a frog? Asking the real questions. I don't think she really needs elemental materia if she has elements already. Give her poison and time. starting to really need slots again. Uh, let's... I kind of want to keep elemental. Maybe I'll do it defensively, though. Tell you what, let's give you the assess materia for now. Assess earrings. Because I want to equip some of this stuff, start leveling it up. So I'm going to want it later. This game gives you so many weird emotions. It's like we've been through such a long stretch of just crazy, goofy nonsense, and then it throws me into this just beautiful landscape with this calming music, and it's just like, now go and explore and just enjoy. It feels like I'm playing two different games, but in a good way. Like the fact that all of this is in the same game. <laughs> Wait, can I do that? I want to go down the zip line. Can I... Can I correct you? This game has a little bit of everything and I love it. I think... I think it has a lot of bit of everything. I think it's fair to say it has a lot of everything. I think it has a lot of everything and I love it. Here comes Yuvi! And my other party members are Sonic the Hedgehogging over here. Apparently they didn't want to do the zipline. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, it's, it's got it all, and it's got a lot of all of it. That's what's so impressive. If it were a little bit of everything, I feel like it would come across as like, they had too many ideas and couldn't commit to one. But it feels like they committed to everything and pulled off everything. It's wild. If another game tried to do this, I'd be like, yeah, they just couldn't commit to an idea. And they just, you know, 
threw everything at the wall, but it doesn't feel like they did that here. It feels like they just genuinely had a lot of great ideas and went with all of them. And, you know, there's a reason it took four years to make. Oh, how cool would it be if we killed these and then we fought them in the thing and it gave us big guard? Specializes in both closed and ranged combat with their throwing star and ninja skills. Press square to strike a foe with their throwing star. Hold it down to continue attacking while putting distance between the enemy. Use triangle to launch your throwing star at an enemy. While it's launched, press square to activate Yuki Sun Jitsu. Changing the elemental affinity of the ranged attack with the elemental jitsu ability. The throwing star will return automatically after a certain amount of time, but it can be retrieved by pressing earlier. Using triangle again. So, so far, she seems to be the same. Sounds the same. Deal with that. Here I go. Oh my god, look at all these moves yet. She still has Art of War. Oh man, she still has this? Dude, she might be. She might be as OP as she was. Also, really good for this fight in particular because she can do magic without MP. Nope. Earth can't hit anything. She can't get any ATB. Man, this fight is something else. Stop. You guys done now? Oh no, she killed it. The shell spinner ability is like the worst thing ever. Okay, that doesn't do anything. They're already on fire. Trying to at least get a stagger. There we go. Run like a chocobo. She still does the same same thing. This isn't going to do much, but... Dang it. but I was trolling the whole first part of the fight. I got plenty of these. So far, yeah, she's pretty similar. I 
when I ask how about you execute your battle command inputs, the method is available in Remake, but not sure if I bring it up or it will be considered. Are you talking about, like, the shortcuts or something else? Yes, we're finally out of Costa del Sol, Zach. Yeah, sure. Ask away. The reason I'm not you so I actually thought about this myself. I was like, why am I not using shortcuts? But I think I did the same exact thing in Remake, where like my first playthrough, I just looked at the menus. And then my second playthrough, I started implementing shortcuts. Um, I just kind of like being able to pause the battle and think about what abilities I want to use on my first playthrough because I found that if I went right into using shortcuts, I kept forgetting that I had other abilities. And then I just wouldn't use them and then I'd be using the same abilities over and over. So I like seeing the whole menu just so I can kind of see like which abilities have I not tried yet for the sake of like my first playthrough. But I, like on the second playthrough, I'll probably have a better idea of what abilities I want and I'll probably shortcut a lot of them. Really the only character where shortcutting is super useful is Tifa for animation canceling, but even then you can do that through the menu, it's just slightly less optimal. But um, you know, like other than Tifa and like Red 13, you really don't need to use shortcuts. They're just, uh, you know, just whether or not you like them or not. I don't really have much to do with you. Oh, of course. I wish there was a way to stop the spinning, like if you blocked it, they stopped. <laughs> But they just keep this going. For you. Can you take over? Well, let me answer this question. So team members' commands can be opened without switching to them. Would you rather switch and do shortcuts or keep the character and switch menus? Oh, if you're talking about other characters, it's better to menu. It's better to menu than to switch and then shortcut. Because, like, well, I guess technically it's not, but that's way more work for the same outcome. If we're if we're talking on a super technical basis, like straight up speedrun mechanics, it would technically be faster to switch to another character and shortcut. But that's literally like if we're speedrunning the game. Otherwise, it's pretty silly to do that. out of your Beyblades. Yeah, like, I looked into a lot of the speedrun mechanics in this game in Remake because uh, I was planning on speedrunning it at one point, or at least trying it. Um, and, yeah, like, technically, swapping and shortcutting is faster. But, uh, literally, other than that edge case, you're doing way more work for the same outcome. You might as well just pause and activate it through there. Unless you need to reposition. Which I do that a lot. I switch to a character, reposition, use their ability, and switch back. What's the world record for Remake? There's a lot of different categories. I think the quickest category, which would be New Game Plus Easy, 
with glitches, I think is like down to five and a half hours or something. Because there's one chapter you skip completely and like three other chapters you skip quite a bit of. And all the bosses are like one shot in that category. I prefer doing the semi speed runs of uh, the um, the fights, like Bahamut and stuff. I did a bunch of Bahamut stuff. And my favorite thing I did not remake by far was my Top Secrets No Materia run. That was the funnest thing I've done in a video game in a long time. If you haven't seen that, I highly recommend it. It was awesome. And also had like a crazy photo finish. Oh my! Moving on then. So Yuffie's kind of strong. <laughs> I uh. I said I was worried about Yuffie, and I think my worries were valid. Kind of a kind of a buh moment. Yes, this is Runeblade. When September ends. I'll take care of you. Tagging out. I got it. And no MP. Wake up. Dude, Yuffie's nuts. Holy cow. There you go, it's up to four, or down to four hours now. If I were to run it, I would either run the, the quickest category, because I tend to like shorter runs, um, or I would run the normal category, normal difficulty, normal playthrough. But that one's a bit too long for me. I don't mind... Like, I can do longer runs, I've done longer runs before, but with all, with all the, like, just... I, I have so many projects and so many different games I want to play and so many different things I want to do that long speed runs just tend to really bog me down because I feel like they just take so much of my day. I, I do, like, a six-hour speed run, and then that's, like, my whole day, and it just... It makes me frustrated, like, especially when I lose a run. If I lose a run like five hours in and I'm like, I just wasted five hours, I could have been doing like these 900 other things that I wanted to do today, you know? Like it's just, eh. So I kind of prefer shorter speed runs in general. Monster. At least for now. Don't overdo it. I don't get as frustrated with smaller runs because it's like, oh, I can just start again. So... So, so, this chick is nuts. I want to see if her, uh, her dodge move is still so freaking good. I'm doing so much stagger. This is... 
So this is a bad example because these guys are so quick, but... Yep. Holy moly. Oh my... Yeah, just everything she does does so much stagger, and then her freaking dodge just like auto pressures. It's just like an integrate, and it's nuts. So, for those of you that like didn't hear my my spiel about it before we started, because I think I talked about it like during the demo, but I don't think I really talked about it during the game yet. I was worried about Yuffie from a balance standpoint when we were playing the demo, because. In Intergrade, they gave Yuffie, like, every mechanic in the book because she's mostly alone. She has Sonon, but it's more of just for the tag team moves. Um, so in Intergrade, she basically pressures with every single attack. She, well, she staggers with every single attack. She pressures with her dodge. The dodge can dodge any move in the game, and you can use the slow motion of the menu to time it perfectly. It's not like the perfect block in this game where you have to like press the block button right when you get hit for it to work. With the dodge, you're in the menu when you select it, so everything's going super slow-mo. So you can just wait until the attack is right about to hit you and then activate the dodge. So that's why the dodge is so good, not to mention it like always pressures. Also, she had perfect block in Intergrade, which now everyone has it, so that's fine. But she had perfect block where everyone else didn't. And then on top of all that, she has all the elements baked into her kit. And she can use magic without taking MP, which is another thing that no one can do. So, like, she is insane in terms of all of the tools she's given. But it makes sense for Intergrade because she was on her own most of the time. But I was afraid that if we put all of those into Yuffie in this game, she would be so overpowered that, like, there'd be no reason not to use her. And I gotta say, like, I'm kind of getting that vibe right now. Like, she is so good and has everything that I don't think I'm going to be removing her from my party ever. <laughs> I don't know what she has that or anyone else has that she doesn't. And she has range also. She has a ranged attack. She has aerial battle. She has close up battle. She has everything. Okay, that was a little too early. I didn't know what this thing's attack was. You gonna attack? Come on. I don't know what this is. It feels like the timing for this is a bit harder. Are you gonna attack? Come on. These are these guys that make tornadoes every time you hit them. Oh, that didn't count, apparently. Alright, so it feels a bit harder to pull off, at least. Holy moly. She doesn't have a dedicated pressure move, so that is one thing she's lacking. But all of her attacks pressure like crazy, so... I don't know, man. She's pretty wild. She is pretty wild. I don't think she's, like... Unbeatable, or, like... Maybe not OP, but holy moly. Yeah, most enemies, most enemies are like, you need an element to pressure them or something else. So when Yuffie can do all the elements. Her ninjutsu seems pretty weak though, like weaker than it was in Intergrade. I don't know if like giving her a magic weapon, like maybe she gets a magic weapon later and that improves it. But with the weapon she has right now, 
It does feel a bit weak. And yeah, the dodge feels weaker, but I don't know if that's just because I'm bad and I haven't played Yuffie in a while. Or if it's actually worse. But it feels like it's harder to time. Maybe it's just that enemy, though. I mean, at least... Uh... What is this? This is all just... I mean, there's really, like, the... The open world between Costa del Sol and... Um, oh, I guess we can go that way, yeah. The open area between Costa del Sol and um, Mount Coral is basically, like, two seconds long. There's, like, a bridge and that's it. So they were pretty... Uh, open to just explore this as much as they wanted. Um, and I do kind of like it's kind of a it's still got that Cosa del Sol flair but it's turning more into mountain mountains. I like it. I'm wondering wondering if we go through Mount Coral and then get a shortcut here with like the buggy or something. Is that the reactor? This area seems kind of small actually. Like we're just going to go right to Mount Coral. Which is a bit of a shame. I wanted to explore for longer but that's accurate to the game, because Mount Coral's right next to Costa del Sol. Yeah, that... Is that supposed to be the river? Maybe. Dude, that... That's actually really wild if that's the river, because I'm thinking about it and the uh, the the level design or whatever you want to call it of the original game is you come out of Costa del Sol, you walk forward and you get stopped by the river, which tells you as the player like, oh, we can't go across rivers. And then you go over to the right and go across the bridge and go into Mount Coral you do all that, you do the gold saucer, you get the buggy, and the first thing the buggy says is, it can go over rivers. And then you think to yourself, oh yeah, that river from before. So that's like what they were going for. And it looks like they did the same exact thing here, where if you just go straight from Costa del Sol, you end up at this river that says you cannot go further. So I'll, uh, that would be really cool if that's actually exactly what this is. Like, you need the, the buggy to go across this. They will have essentially done the same exact level design as in the original, but in their own way. I feel like Yuffie's regular attack damage is bad, but Art of War is pretty insane. But, like, to get her abilities, she's not doing a ton of damage. Like, not as much as Cloud. Which, if I look at their stats... Okay, well, she has quite a bit less attack than Cloud, so that's why. It's not her design, she just has less attack. Probably because Cloud has... Cloud has his... Rune Blade with Super Power, and also... Well, not really. But Cloud do be Cloud. Chugbo.
What's not open world? This game or games in general? I believe the word they used for this is open zone. <laughs> no, it's not. It's open zone, I guess. It, it's it's a hybrid. It's not technically open world if we're if we're nerging. If we're saying actually then yeah, it's, it's not open world. But, you know, funnily enough, it feels more open than something like 15, where it's like, here's some places you can go, and if you try to go anywhere else, we're going to stop you with a giant wall. So, like, yes, 15 is technically open world, and this game is technically not, but this game feels more open than 15 does. Or a lot of older open world games, for that matter. I will say, though, that feeling of walking all the way across that giant bridge outside of Midgar and then walking into Calm and then walking all the way through Calm into Junon area was one of the most, like, inspiring moments. Like, it felt like a real place. It, it felt more open world. Like, that experience felt more open world than Skyrim. To me. To me, Skyrim being this big open world, but every time I go to a location, I have to sit through a load screen. That moment of walking all the way through Calm and getting to Junon felt more open than, like, running through a giant field in Skyrim and then sitting in a load screen while waiting for the city to appear. You know what I mean? Like, yes, Skyrim is a much more open game than this, but the seamlessness of just being able to walk from one area into a city and then through to the other area without any of it loading gave me a more like this is a real world experience than something like Skyrim, which is much more open, much bigger, much more to do, much more realistic. But you have to sit through load screens, you know? Like, it just, it, it, that moment really made me feel like, like, whoa, this is such a, like, huge open world, you know? Now, don't get me wrong, Skyrim's way more open than this game in many ways, but just that feeling I got, you know? That feeling I got of, like, being able to just walk in and out of a town is not something I think I've ever felt playing a game. You cannot proceed any further in your current attire. Well, then I don't want to go. Chocobo shirt for life. Um. Yeah, there's not actually a lot to do here, unfortunately. It's kind of a small area before the next place. Um. The only game I can think of is like... Horizon Forbidden West, you could do the same thing. You could fly all the way across the world and land directly in a town and do town stuff and walk out. But the towns in Forbidden West are open, like, they almost feel like part of the world. Whereas here, Calm looks completely different than what surrounds it. Like, it, it feels like a city, you know? So it's a really crazy feeling being able to walk into a city with bustling people and things to do and mini games to play and all that but then just walk out into the world it's really a crazy feeling horizon forbidden west the cities just kind of feel like part of the world you know With the exception of maybe, like, that one giant city. But, yeah. 
it all feels similar enough to where it didn't give me that same feeling. Great gains. We found a gem. Oh my god, it's playing the song from Remake. Wait, oh, th I thought this was Johnny. <laughs> it looked like Johnny. Sign up, get buff. This is obviously for something that we haven't done yet. Nothing beats a good protein shake. Oh, here comes everyone. Oh man. Red 13 and Tifa were the ones I wanted to see do it the most. They're not doing it. Like, I wanted to know how they would do it. Because they don't have a weapon. Maybe they can't do it. Going, Jesse. Holy moly. Mad. Oh my god. No time to celebrate. Stab like a tomberry. You think the stakes are higher because Sephiroth's backseating Cloud's adventure? Costa. All right, well, there's a few more things to do. Chase Moogles around. Yeah, sure, why not? Oh. Sephiroth doesn't care for Cloud's friends, and what gets Cloud through his journey is the bonds he makes with his friends. Sephiroth doesn't care if one of his one of the his party members die to a cactuar or whatever. 
Oh, I see what you're saying. So, like, I was making the argument that because Sephiroth is following Cloud and making sure that Cloud doesn't die so that they can have their grand fight, that lowers the stakes of the general game because we know that Cloud is going to survive. But your argument against that is that even though Cloud is meant to survive, Sephiroth doesn't care about the other party members, so he may let one of the other party members die. That's fair. I also think what someone said before about how, like, Sephiroth's maybe not always watching, like, literally every single fight. So, like, the stakes of certain situations are still there because Sephiroth's not going to swoop in and save them from literally everything. Like, I don't think Sephiroth would swoop in and save them from Hojo. Like, maybe, if he was watching, but it didn't seem like he was watching. Also, it does throw into question why he would even attack us in the boat and have Genova try to kill us if he doesn't want Cloud to die. Question mark, question mark, question mark. I think it's just one of those video game things, you know, <laughs> where like the villain is not the smartest sometimes. Like the villain explaining their plan to the, the good guys or something, it's just kind of a villain trope. Yeah, we just got Yuffie. By the way, I can't call a chocobo, right? Yeah. I'm wondering if we get the chocobo in the next area. Maybe we don't get the buggy at all. Maybe we get a blue chocobo. That's what lets us go across the water. I bet you that's what it is. Then we probably get the, the buggy way later. If at all. My guess is we get past Mount Coral and we get a blue chocobo and then later we get like maybe after Cosmo Canyon or something we get the buggy. Let's see. <laughs> or maybe you could just swim across when the game decides I can swim across. That's also a possibility. I don't know though, there were like some twigs in the way. There was like a specific objective we had to get across. It was like a little pile of twigs. So I think we do need something. Dude, the mid-air braver is so freaking cool. I love that it does extra damage. You have to learn how to ride on Red 13's back. <laughs> 